All right, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over one of the questions that I get asked pretty frequently, and it is how to find your niche in photography and filmmaking. A lot of people have just told me, you know, they're struggling to find out what they truly love and what they're passionate about and what they wanna shoot, and they're not sure if they should be doing certain jobs for money reasons or if they should be doing certain jobs because they like it, but the money might not be there. So in this video, I wanna break down a few things and kind of just talk about finding your niche in photo and video, kind of how I found mine, and tips that will help you find it. So I'm going to put in some timestamps, so if you want to skip ahead or just see certain parts, or just kind of for organization of the video, I'll put those somewhere around here. But in this video, I'm going to be going over how to find your niche in photo and video, sub-niches of photography, sub-niches of filmmaking, learning everything, why you should take every job in the beginning, who inspires you, finding your passion, being proactive. If someone you follow is successful in a certain niche, you can also be successful in that same way. Finding a mentor, kind of one man on the go type shooting versus full production team style how I found what I love and the journey. So in photography, there's so many different sub niches. There's wildlife, there's architecture, there's real estate, there's wedding photography, portrait photography, landscape photography, cultural photography, current events photography, event photography. There's so many different sub niches of photography. And I think the best way to find your niche and what you like doing is you have to try all of these. Similarly, the same with filmmaking and making videos. You have to try all of the sub niches of videos. So like weddings, cinematic videos, time lapse videos, aerial films, shooting commercials, just shooting vlogs or being a storyteller. You just have to try them all. So before finding your niche in photo and video, I think the most important thing is that you have to learn everything. Because the end goal eventually is probably gonna be building a career in photo and video and having a business surrounding what you like doing in the niche that you love. But before you can kind of get there, you need to learn the skills. There's a lot of technical aspects to photography and filmmaking that you just have to learn. Everyone has to learn to be successful in it. You know, you're not gonna be shooting on automatic. There's just certain things that you need to learn. But once you learn it, it's just like secondhand stuff that you don't even think twice about and it'll just come supernatural. First and foremost, you just have to learn all the skills that go with photo and video. So for photography, things like ISO, shutter speed, aperture, and then things for filmmaking like bit rate, frame rate, uh, which lens to choose when shooting a certain subject, picture profiles, kind of everything that goes with filmmaking. All right, so after you've learned all the technical skills for photo and video, I think starting off, it's super important to take every single job offer in the beginning. And I think this is a super crucial thing because obviously we all know practice makes perfect. And in the beginning, you know, you probably bought a camera, you wanna get into photo and video, you're probably spending a lot of time on YouTube, you have a lot of friends and family who are noticing what you're trying to get into and what you're trying to learn. So most of your job offers in the beginning are just gonna be coming from friends and family. And to be honest, they're probably not gonna be jobs. They're probably just gonna be a friend or family asking you to take photos or make a video about something, which, in the beginning, I think you should just be taking every single opportunity because the good thing about this is because all your friends and family, all of them have different interests, they have different hobbies and things that interest them. So if you're, if a bunch of them are asking you to do photo and video for them, you're going to get experience in a lot of different niches and that's going to give you real world experience in different niches of photo and video, practicing things. You might realize you don't like certain aspects of some niches, but you really like aspects of other niches. Also in the beginning, it's just great experience. You know, you're building your portfolio, you're building your clientele of who you've worked with and stuff that you can add to your media kit. When I first started, I was taking real estate jobs, not for anything fancy, just houses that are in my area. Um, I made a paintball video for someone I worked with. That was probably the second video I made in my entire life. And it was so bad, but I think my friend knew it was and he just wanted something of him and his friends doing paintball. And he probably thought it was really cool. But if, you know, if I didn't say yes to all of these offers that were coming in in the beginning, like I would have never realized I don't really like shooting a paintball video or I don't really have the equipment to shoot a paintball video because at the time I didn't have a big telephoto lens, something that I should have had for a job like that. All right, so next up, I think it's pretty important to kind of just establish, even if it's just to yourself, who inspires you? You know, what kind of pages are you following? What kind of people are you following? What things interest you in aspects outside of photo and video? You know, are you following a lot of motivational pages? Are you following a lot of architectural pages? Are you following a lot of travel pages? This is kind of a good indicator of what niche in photo and video that you might like, because this will just be a reflection of things you already love. And because of the digital age that we're in, now every single company, every single niche, every single business 
needs photo and video content to run their businesses. You can make a thriving business in photo and video from any niche out there. So this is a good starting point of just seeing who inspires you and, and then going from there. You know, when I first started, I was inspired by all these really, really amazing creators. But over the years, it's kind of shifted and those guys do still inspire me. But a lot of the people that inspire me aren't necessarily creators. They're more so people that just are doing what they love at such a crazy level and that I find super inspiring. So there's people like David Goggins, Elon Musk, Gary Vee, Kevin Hart, Steve Aoki. Those are all people that really, really inspire me, but they have nothing to do with photo or video. But the way that I can interpret that into my niche is not by what they're doing, but it's more so just about the intensity at which I am doing my work and, and at which I'm doing what I love as they're doing what they love. But as an all-time favorite, my favorite photographer is Michael Shaneblum. He's been my favorite for years and I don't see that changing anytime soon because his work is just so, so freaking incredible. Um, if you haven't seen his work, highly recommend checking out. But yeah, like I said, this is just a really good starting point to kind of see which direction or which niche you might be falling towards. Kind of piggybacking on this last point, is finding your passion. And this isn't like a cut and dry thing. It's not easy to find your passion. It's not just something you stumble across when you open up the fridge in the morning. This is something that just one random day you're gonna stumble upon because you tried a bunch of different things and you're gonna be like, wow, you know what? I really, really like doing this. And I really don't like doing this. And then once you have that passion, and it's just like the most amazing thing to just kind of chase that passion and try with everything you have to make that your career. And it's just like the most fun thing ever. All right, another important step in finding your niche is I think you just have to be proactive. You need to be willing to put yourself out there. You need to be willing to meet people. You need to be willing to get out of your comfort zone. And this is kind of just in all things in life. But if you sit on your couch for 10 years and never try any, let's say, activities or sports, you're never going to know if you like anything. But, you know, if you try swimming, rollerblading, ice skating, rock climbing, running marathons, until you try all of those, you might not realize that you love rock climbing like I do. And you might not realize that that might be a passion of yours. And it wasn't until you did it that you realized that you loved it so much. And I just think that this carries into photo and video and you just need to be proactive and you need to spend a lot of time, a year, two years, in just trying everything, shooting everything. Someone says they want you to take photos or make a video of something, do it. Do absolutely everything. You have to be proactive. And then in that, you'll stumble across what you love and what you don't love. And if someone else is doing it, so can you. And this is an important point because I think there's a lot of people out there that see people with millions of followers or hundreds of thousands of followers just killing it. And they're like, you know, well, they're already doing it. I could never do it. Or the market's too saturated. Or there's just no room for someone like me who has who hasn't done anything yet. And I think that this is genuinely just a mindset thing. Like before you can do anything, you just have to kind of believe it and believe that you're able to do anything. And then once you kind of have that shift in your head, then it's like, okay, how did they do it? You know, kind of see someone that inspires you, kind of see where they're at and then kind of backtrack it and backtrace it a few steps and be like, okay, they did this for this long. They did this for that long. And then they did this, this, and this. So kind of just backtracing all of their steps and then following what has been working. You know, social media is changing every day and there's new apps every single day, but the main way to succeed is just putting in the work and staying consistent. So if someone else is doing it in a niche that you don't think is possible, just know that if someone else is doing it, you can too. All right, and also for finding your niche in photo and video, I don't think that this is a necessity, but I do think it's important to find a mentor. And whether this is a real mentor or it's just someone that you follow very closely online, I just think it's super important. I didn't really have a mentor in the beginning, but I knew some people with very successful photography businesses like my cousin and someone in the area that is very successful photography business. So pretty much I would just, anytime I had a question, I would ask them and I would try to make it good questions, not just stupid questions that I could find on Google with one click and one search but it really helped me to be able to ask these guys these questions. And if I had a mentor, I think I would have been even more on the fast track because I had tons and tons of trial and error. So I just think that this is important. Once you kind of establish who inspires you and what your passion is, finding a mentor in that area and in that niche, I think is super important. All right, so this next point is kind of towards filmmaking and not so much photography. But before you break filmmaking down into all the sub niches or kind of different ways that you can take filmmaking, there's two main distinctions between types of filmmaking and then from there, I think they're broken down into their niches. And that would be kind of like a one man on the go type thing or kind of classic movie style production team. With DSLRs getting so good and so compact and so small, like my Sony a7 III is such a beast, I can go out, I can direct, I can produce, I can film, I can edit, color grade, 
do the script, do a narration, and send it to the client. I can do one man team because of how crazy technology is. But back before these cameras were available, making big production style videos, you needed an entire team. Some videos, you needed a team of 20 to 50 people to get it done. And movie sets, there's hundreds and hundreds of people. That's still very much a thing. I've got a bunch of friends out in LA who kind of do the production style. A few of them are producers. A few of them are DP, a few of them are editors, a few of them do coloring, and they all kill it and they all love that style. They all love working with a big team for one big goal and one big video. Personally, I kind of fall on the other end of the spectrum. Um, I love just kind of run and gun, you know, shooting things on the go, and I love doing things kind of my style and my way. So I think for filmmakers, before finding your niche, you should kind of be exposed to both of those. Like go out and try to do a video just by yourself where you do everything. And then if you have the opportunity to, get on a set, even if you're just there helping out or offer to do a behind the scenes video just so you can kind of see how a set and production works. I think you should be exposed to both and then from there decide which is more to your taste and your style and then kind of from that find your niche in those. So kind of just to put things in context, I'm going to talk about finding what I love and the niches that I like doing and how I got to the point where I knew what I enjoyed doing. So even though I've been shooting for around four years or so, it wasn't until like a year and a half where I seriously was like, okay, I really love doing these things and I really hate doing all of these other things. And that took a long time. So I was shooting for a few years where, to be honest, I didn't really have any preference. I kind of just went where the wind took me. If I got a job offer for this, I'd do it. If I got a job offer for this, I would do it. And I worked with a few people where I was kind of all encompassing and I did a bunch of different styles per job. So I was exposed to a lot of things, but it wasn't for a few years into shooting where I discovered, I was like, okay, I know what I love. I love landscape photography. I love just being out in the mountains and shooting kind of like a very planned shot, you know, checking the weather, checking the sun and moon cycles, seeing where the stars are gonna be at what time, hiking to a certain place by a certain time, getting a photo to the way I like it from planning all of these factors. I just love that. I love aerial photography, time-lapse photography, and I actually really love kind of like high-end real estate kind of architectural photography just because I think it's really cool to be honest but I did get started doing real estate photography and then over the years I've done some high-end real estate photography in places like Greece, the Maldives, Turks and Caicos. I can put up some photos so you guys can see some examples. But yeah like it was like two and a half years of shooting non-stop until I figured out what I loved. And to be honest, this was just a result of shooting everything, always being exposed to new niches, new people, and new styles, <laughs> just shooting 24 seven for a few years. And honestly, a lot of self-awareness. Like it, it was mostly just me reflecting for a few months. I was like, you know, I really like this. And how can I just be doing this? And how can I say no to all of this stuff? So a lot of that was just self-awareness. And in the beginning, there's no way I could have ultimately decided what I like doing or there were certain things I did that were super flashy and super cool but did, at the end of the day I didn't really enjoy doing them but the flashiness of them made them cool but long term it was like okay you know that was cool but I don't really like doing it. At the end of the day it's just a journey you know learning photography and filmmaking and whether it's a hobby or whether you're looking to turn it into a career it's just a journey that's going to continue to evolve and evolve over time based on what you do, what you practice, what offers you take. It's gonna be changing constantly every day when you're trying new things, getting exposed to different niches. I would just end it off with don't rush it, learn and practice everything. Don't be afraid to try new things and you'll eventually find your niche and what you love doing. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful and give you guys some insight to kind of my journey, how I found the niches that I love shooting and some tips for how you can find your niche. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.